at wood machines, the common second law laboratory experiment, and inclines of Pittsburgh. Newton's second and third law, two object problems, chapter two. Lots of problems solved. Let's learn physics. Newton's first law of motion, the law of inertia. All objects at rest will naturally stay at rest unless acted upon by a net force. All objects in motion will naturally maintain a constant velocity unless acted upon by a net force. Okay, Newton's second law, it's the equation. Net force equals mass times acceleration. And uh, you could write it down as a sentence, like uh, the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force applied to an object and inversely proportional to its mass or inertia. Okay. That's the second law. Now Newton's third law deals with two objects at a time. Always two objects at a time. Newton's first and second only dealt with one object at a time, but Newton's third law deals with two objects at a time. And the, the best statement of it is not the whole action-reaction garbage, just crappy language, don't use it. But the two objects always apply same size opposite forces to each other. Two objects always apply forces, apply same size opposite forces to each other. Because uh, equal and opposite, no, these two, these two forces that are opposite each other are by definition not equal because they're opposite. Because force has a vector nature to it. And if they're opposite, they're not equal. So anyway, two objects always apply same size opposite forces to each other. And a lot of our second law problems require an understanding of Newton's third law because you have two objects pulling on each other and that internal force between the two is a third law force pair. We don't call it the action-reaction law. Ugh, it's such bad language. We call it the force pair law. Because they're, they're always in pairs. Always in pairs. So this is, uh, this is a series of videos on Newton's second, se second and third laws of motion together. Problems. Lots of them. Enjoy. Let's get to it and solve some of these second and third law two object problems. This is chapter two of three. And remember, since this is a video, please stop it and solve the problem independently and then come back and forth and back and forth and stop and start and stop and start because that's going to help you. Just watching this thing's probably not. This is what is called an Adwood machine. Big weight on one side, small weight on the other. Watch the acceleration. Two object problems, Atwood machines. Uh, these little Atwood machines, some guy named Atwood came up with this concept and uh, it helps you understand forces and things. So this is an Atwood machine. That's kind of what it looks like right there. You have a pulley, which in our introductory problems has no friction and effectively no mass. So there's no inertia here, there's no friction. So the acceleration of all of these objects is exactly the same. The tension, and the reason why there's no friction and no inertia of this thing is because the tension here is assumed to be the tension here. So the tension is a constant all the way through. Otherwise, we can't solve the introdu introductory problems. A pulley is a single cable over with a 10 kilogram mass attached to one side, five kilogram mass attached to the other. Find the acceleration. What's the tension in the cable? Atwood machine is its name. So same concept, we're gonna use the whole system. So what pulls this whole thing forward? The 100 Newton weight. What pulls it backward? the 50 Newton weight. Remember that net force equals mass times acceleration. That equation is a vector equation. So this thing, it's a vector. And that is a vector. Whatever the direction of acceleration is, that's going to be positive, And your positive force will be in the same direction as your acceleration. 100 Newtons is the weight forward. 50 Newtons is the weight backward. 15 kilograms is the total. I'm treating it as a system. 100 minus 50 is 50 divided by 15 gives you 3.33 meters per second every second in that direction. Not in a single direction because the 5 kilogram goes up, accelerates up, and the 10 kilogram accelerates down 3.33 meters per second every second. Now, separate free body diagram to find the force between them. Tension and tension, that's that internal force. You pick either the 10 or the 5 and then think about it. Here is the free body diagram of the 10 kilogram mass. 100 newtons down. Tension has to be smaller because it is accelerating downward. The thing's accelerating down. So tension's got to be smaller. Therefore, you would have, uh, again, net force is mass times acceleration. Weight minus the tension. Forward force minus backward force equals mass times forward acceleration. 
100 newtons minus t is equal to 10 times 3.33 meters per second every second. And then 100 minus t is equal to 33. Subtract, you get a negative 66.7 and a negative t so that uh, they, they divide each other out or can't the negatives multiply through by negative. 67 newtons up is the tension. You can do the same thing over here and find 67 newtons. But in this case, the up tension is going to be bigger than the down 50 newtons, and the answer will still be 67 newtons. So that's number six. Now number eight. I like my numbering system. Here's number eight. An Atwood machine's 10 kilogram mass on one side accelerates at 2 meters per second down, which means that this one's accelerating at 2 meters per second every second up. Find the mass on the other side and find the tension in the cable. Huh. Net force is mass times acceleration. Uh, what's the forward force? This, 100 newtons minus the weight is equal to the total mass multiplied by the acceleration. Okay, 100 newtons minus the unknown weight is equal to 10 kilograms plus the mass, total mass, multiplied by 2 meters per second every second. Distribute. Get 100 newtons minus mg. This is mg, right? Oh, well that, those aren't two separate unknowns. This is m times 10 newtons per kilogram. 10 kilograms plus the mass times 2. Then just distribute for real. Drop all the units because then you can actually solve it. Well, most of them. 100 minus 10m. See, this, that is a variable. And that is a variable. Times 2. So you get uh, 20 plus 2m. 100 minus 10m. Combine like terms. Okay, so combine like terms, you get add 10m, you get 12m. Subtract 20, you get 80. 80 divided by 12 gives you 6.67 kilograms. Okay, so it's smaller, 6.67 kilograms. Makes sense. You want the most benefit out of this video? Stop and solve. A variation on the Atwood machine problems are cart and hanging mass. This is a standard Newton second law lab that we do in class. The one kilogram cart at rest on a table is attached to a horizontal table. It's got to be horizontal at first. It's attached to a string which runs over a pulley. On the other end of the string is a 50 gram mass. Find the acceleration. Here's the situation. You have a 50 gram mass hanging over here. You got the little pulley, the one kilogram cart. And the weight of this thing multiplied by 10 is a half a newton. So acceleration is net force over mass. What's the net force? Well, what does the weight do over here? The weight pushes into the incline. Normal force reacts to it. So the weight here, contrary to the other ones from before, doesn't resist anything. It just pushes into the incline, and then the normal force pushes up. So what we're looking for is, again, this is a, it's a vector equation. So you're interested in the forces in the direction of the acceleration. This thing is going to accelerate to the right. This one's going to accelerate down. So the force in the direction of acceleration for the system is a half a newton. There isn't any friction over here for the first problem. It's the forward weight force. Weight is the forward force, and that's it. There isn't any backward force. And then the total mass, add the two up. So it's a half a newton divided by 1.050 kilograms and we get 0.476 meters per second every second. The tension that pulls back on this thing right here and the tension that pulls forward on the one kilogram, that's an internal force. That's a Newton's third law pair, not a part of the big picture. Okay, two objects treated as one, tension is an internal force between the two, so it doesn't appear in this diagram. But you need to find it eventually, so you will have to find the tension in a future problem. And then here's another one that's related to it. Find the acceleration of the system above if it has a friction force of 0.2 newtons. Friction force would be applied to this thing here, so there's a backward friction force. So thinking about it, you have that same situation, right? But you have a, for a backward friction force here. And so the weight forward, friction force backward, same total mass. Weight forward is 0.5 newtons minus 0.2 newtons backward. 1.050 kilograms is still the total mass. Find the acceleration of 0.286 meters per second every second, and that's the direction of the arrow. Not too bad, right? Remembering that the surface friction force is the coefficient of friction times the normal force. A 12 a 2 kilogram cart at rest on a table is attached to a string which runs over a pulley on the other end of the string. It's a 70 gram mass. 
70 grams, 0 0.070 kilograms, and 0 0.70 newtons. Find the acceleration treating the, the whole system as one. Acceleration is net force over mass. Same thing we did before. 0.7 newtons is the weight divided by the, the total mass, 2.070 kilograms, and you get 0.338 meters per second every second. Now, I want to find the tension in the string. Find the tension. Find the tension. So uh, pick one object, either this one or this one, and draw a free body diagram of it. It's right there. So a free body diagram. Weight is 0.7 newtons. Tension is less than that because it is accelerating down. I know what the acceleration is at 0.338 meters per second every second. Net force is mass times acceleration. Net force would be on this object, 0.7 newtons minus the tension divided by the mass of it, which is 0 0.070 kilograms. 0.7 newtons minus T equals 0 0.070 kilograms times 0.338 meters per second every second. Multiply, subtract, double negative everything, 0.676 newtons up, which is a little bit smaller than the 0.7 newtons. And that makes sense because the acceleration is quite small. Now number 13, the three kilogram card is at rest on a table and is attached to a string. So it's the same problem as this, slightly different numbers. But in this case, there is a friction force of 0.1 newtons over here on the three kilogram card, giving you a friction force. So net force over mass, 0.8 newtons minus 0.1 newtons, weight minus the friction force divided by the total mass of the two together. Acceleration is 0.227 meters per second every second. And I can use the free body diagram of this one or of this one. And in this case, I chose to use the free body diagram of the other one, this cart on the table. Normal force and weight, they balance each other, but they're not material to our problem. We're given the friction force. So the friction force is 0.1 newtons. It is on the cart. The tension is forward, and that forward tension is going to be the same size as the backward tension on the hanging weight. Net force is mass times acceleration. Forward force minus backward force. Tension minus 0.1 newtons is equal to its mass, just its mass, multiplied by the known common acceleration between the two. Add those two, and you get a total of not 0.681 newtons, but 0 0.7, 0 0.781, 7, 0 0.781 newtons forward, and 0 0.781 newtons backward on the on the weight up here. In this, our last problem of chapter two, if the system accelerates at three meters per second every second, this one's accelerating that way and this one's accelerating down, find the kinetic coefficient of friction between the two kilogram block and the horizontal table. All right, so let's take a look at this. Treating the, whole, the thing as a whole, net force divided by the mass, the net force would be the weight of this, which is 10 newtons minus the friction force divided by the total mass of three kilograms, and the acceleration is three meters per second every second. I guess I could, I could solve the friction force right there. So nine newtons equals 10 newtons minus the friction force. Subtract, negative one newton is equal to the negative friction force. So the friction force is equal to one newton. You can use that. Now the friction coefficient the friction force is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Probably should draw a free body diagram for this thing. So here is that object. This thing has a normal force of 20 newtons. Because it has a weight of 20 newtons, there are no other vertical forces. And that's what you would see. Tension is forward and the friction force is backward. Friction force is one newton. So one newton is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction because this is going to accelerate multiplied by the 20 newton normal force. So the coefficient of kinetic friction is one divided by 20, which is 0 0.05, which is an extraordinarily small coefficient of friction. And let's say you wanted to find the tension also. Tension, net force equals mass times acceleration. That would be mass of two kilograms for this object, two kilograms multiplied by the acceleration given of 
three meters per second every second. And the net force is tension minus the known friction force, one newton tension, minus one newton is equal to three times two is six newtons. Tension equals six plus one is seven newtons for that one. You can also double check it by going over here, and the weight is 10 newtons down. Acceleration is three meters per second every second, one kilogram. Okay, confirm the tension is seven newtons. In this particular case, on this free body diagram, it is in the forward direction. Here you would have the weight of 10 newtons, tension of seven newtons, that and that, those two are a third law pair. Resultant, uh, the net force is three newtons, one kilogram. Oh yeah, that's uh, acceleration of three meters per second every second, confirmed. And that was some second and third law two object problems, chapter two, next time, inclined planes. I know I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching Learn Physics. And thanks for that thumbs up too, really helps a lot. New videos most academic weeks. Subscribe for more. I've even got education ideas, Freaky Physics Friday, and Tech Tip Tuesday. And for bicycles, motorcycles, and family adventures, it's my other channel, Bike Physics. You just learned physics.